I was raised a Jehovah's Witness. And so television, specifically Comedy Central and MTV were really like my portals to the outside world. I remember watching a lot of it and being very inspired by a lot of it, but also being almost more inspired by the comics that I thought were terrible. From NCPR, this is Northwards. People, ideas, and conversations from and about Northern New York, Vermont, and beyond. I'm Mitch Tyke. Support for the Northwards podcast comes from St. Lawrence University, where a strong liberal arts tradition with real-world applications equips students to solve 21st century challenges. stlawu.edu. When Doug Smith came to SUNY Canton last fall to speak as part of the Living Writers series, it was, ironically, his first time on the North Country campus. Ironic because the stand-up comic has been taking creative writing classes at SUNY Canton for a couple of years, even as he lives in Brooklyn and performs on the road. Smith has performed on The Late Late Show with James Corden, on Conan, his own web series, and a variety of Comedy Central shows. But his journey to stand-up comedy and eventually to Canton, New York, was an unlikely one, as we'll hear. I chatted with Doug Smith by Zoom from Brooklyn ahead of his trip to the North Country last fall. Thanks so much for taking some time to talk. No problem. Thanks for having me, Mitch. What do you think you get from like studying creative writing, like actually, you know, taking a class in it that you have not actually gotten from practicing the craft all these years? It's it was it was really empowering, honestly, because when I started the class, I thought, man, I'm going to be I'm going to be happy if I am able to squeak by with a C, honestly, (laughs) because I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep up with the workload. I might be completely left in the dust. (laughs) But um, I think all my years of comedy writing has really helped me because I mean, I have kind of a natural discipline. I don't want to say I write every single day, but I I try to. That is always the goal. And uh, yeah, I mean, I was able to kind of, I don't know, maybe I should keep this close to the vest. I was able to repurpose a lot of things that I had already (laughs) written, (laughs) which was certainly helpful. But it was harder in a lot of ways, too, because when I was in high school, I was an expert cheater. You know, I was really good. And you it's, it's a lot harder to do that in an online class. You can't look over your neighbor's, neighbor's shoulder and uh, find out what's the answer to number seven. So <laughs> this was a lot more reading and studying and actually writing stuff and not being able to just, you know, pull it out of thin air. So it was it was definitely a, a challenge, but um, it went it went great. And I and I uh, not to brag, but my last class, I got a, I got a 95 and I felt like a, I'm going to be I'm, like maybe maybe I'll be teaching there someday. Who knows? <laughs> so yeah, it's 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 um the creative writing at Canton is kind of helping my comedy writing and and vice versa. So it's um it's it's really helped me a lot. Well, I was wondering. I mean, it's a different kind of criticism when you know when you're when you're doing stand up. If people don't like it, uh, they either don't laugh or or they react, you know, truly negatively. But when you're in a class, the whole goal, hopefully, that the professor has is to make what you're doing better. Yes, yes. When you're doing stand-up, um, <laughs> yeah, people rarely come up to you afterward and be like, hey, maybe give this a try. You know, they might just uh, throw a bottle at your head or storm out of the room. So, yeah, constructive criticism is 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 very helpful. <laughs> Okay, so maybe this is a is a wonky public radio style question here, but I I have always kind of wondered when you sit down to to write a comedy routine, what does it look like? I mean, do you write it from start to finish? How does how does it come together when you when you talk about like trying to write every day? What are you writing? It can come about one of two ways. It can either be from something that's already happened in your life that you feel inclined to want to talk about like it's an interesting subject that you kind of want to find the funny in and explore that or it can be from just an everyday interaction like i had an interaction at chipotle the other day where i asked the guy for the bathroom code and it was a guy like in his early 20s and i asked him for the bathroom code and he said uh yeah it's 3179 hashtag and i was like wow what a millennial answer to that question right i'm of the generation that we would refer to that as a pound, pound sign. sign right you know pound sign did the heavy lifting for a long time i know that's hashtag is how we all know that symbol now but that usually precedes a category on social media so i was like am i is he filming me and putting me on tiktok keep an eye out for hashtag toilet cam so you know 
like little things like that. That's why it's important to, you know, you're not going to be able to really create in a vacuum. That's why I think it's great to be able to get up on stage as often as possible, but you also have to live your life and have experiences that, you know, fuel you with, with ideas. From a, from a writing standpoint, when when you're going from you know trying to find a way to go from from talking about this experience that you had at Chipotle or or wherever, to talking about you know um, maybe an experience with your son or like going from transitioning from one part of the one part of the routine to another, are there tricks in how you put it together transitions so that you remember what's supposed to come next that you hope we don't notice? Yeah, that's a great question. Yes. Um... Having having segues between your bits is uh, is a very important part of the process. Unless you do purposefully have no segue at all, which can be funny in and of itself, <laughs> you know, which some comics do. They'll just make a hard left turn and they'll finish a joke and then start up a bit about something completely unrelated. And even just launching into a completely different topic can be hilarious in and of itself. <laughs> but yes it's definitely easier to kind of remember the uh, rhythm of your routine if you kind of are able to kind of weave all these bits together, you know? So how one joke ends might be how the next joke begins. That's that's certainly very helpful. But you also don't want to make it too obvious that you're trying to tie it together, <laughs> you know? Like, like if it doesn't naturally tie together, it's almost better to just make the leap and have the audience be like, all right, I guess he's talking about this now. <laughs> Rather than, and speaking of pound signs. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I called customer service. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's good and bad ways to do it for sure. Where did you know before Phil LaMarche's class? Uh, where, where did you learn this stuff? Uh, you know, uh, who were you listening to and watching when you were growing up? I remember watching a lot of Comedy Central as a teenager. Uh, Premium Blend was a show on Comedy Central that was. You remember Premium Blend? I remember. I don't remember anything about it, but <laughs> yeah, it was. A, it was like a showcase show. You know, they had a host and they had like three or four different comics all doing ten or fifteen minutes, and uh, yeah, being really into it. And not to get too far off track, but I was uh, I was raised a Jehovah's Witness, which I don't know if you know much about them, but it's a very isolated, uh, uh, restrictive, uh, oppressive cult, really. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was very much shielded from the outside world. All my secular entertainment was very much there was a lot of restrictions around that. So television specifically comedy central and mtv were really like my portals to the outside world so i watched a lot of comedy central you know on the on the dl because my mom <laughs> would not have gone for that um and i remember watching a lot of it and being very inspired by a lot of it but also being almost more inspired by the comics that i thought were terrible because Part of being a Jehovah's Witness is, is everybody in the congregation is actually encouraged to give sermons to the congregation. So from the time I was eight years old, I would be standing at a podium in front of 100 people reading a Bible passage and doing some sort of commentary on the Bible passage. So I have a history of public speaking that goes back years. And I always really actually enjoyed that part of it and felt very comfortable doing that. So when I finally left the organization, I felt like I was actually kind of had a leg up on everybody else because I had all this experience and it was so liberating to be like, wow, I can, even though I escaped this thing that has, <laughs> has done a lot of damage to me <laughs> psychically, I uh, have this skill set that I'm now able to apply to something that I feel very passionately about. And, and it's almost, it almost became kind of a rebellion in a way of like, Oh my God, I can stand on a stage and talk about whatever I want to talk about. I can talk about the most gnarly offensive things and have people not ostracize me and <laughs> kick me out of the congregation and shun me, but actually applaud me and want more of this. And I could actually make a living doing this. So it was really, really empowering to be able to take that skill set and, and apply it to stand up. 
you you can do all this and and you would be ostracized if if you were still in the congregation but at the same time you have them to thank for being able to do it absolutely yeah 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 wow. sure i have i have plenty of 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 resentments and anger that i'm <laughs> dealing with on an ongoing basis but yeah it it left me they 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 gave me a a, a gift in a way for sure wow is any part of you gathering material even as you are taking online classes? Is is there comedy to be found in in sitting in a room with a whole bunch of of squares like we are now? Um yeah, I mean I definitely I def more I'd say more so um with my son's kindergarten Zoom classes. <laughs> I mean that was definitely ripe fodder for uh for comedy. It was just absolute pure chaos. Um, no, the <laughs> online classes were much, you know, cause we weren't doing any zoom calls or anything. You get your assignments yeah, sent okay. to you and you know, there's no actual like visual interaction with your fellow students. It's all just, uh, it's all just, you know, through, through text. But, so you haven't even you know, seen the inside of a classroom in, uh, in Canton. No, I have not. Yeah. So yeah, doing the whole online course thing is, is, uh, it's definitely foreign, but it's, it's pretty great. I mean, it makes things easier. And when I was when I was going to art school, I was barely able to even convince my my dad to let me go to art school because that's another thing that goes hand in hand with being a Jehovah's Witness is, is you know, higher education is very much frowned upon because they think that's going to lead you to, you know, thinking for yourself <laughs> and having hopes and dreams and aspirations and, and pulling you outside of the organization. So I was able to go to art school with a caveat that I had to commute from home where I grew up in Connecticut. So I had a good two hour commute each way going back and forth to School of Visual Arts, which is brutal. So it's pretty great to be able to take a class in your underpants. You know? <laughs> uh, given your upbringing, how did how did you get into art school? How did you like have the have the body of work to, to convince the art school you were somebody to take a chance on art was really the only thing that was able to uh it was it was really kind of my escape from from that whole that whole chapter of my life because again from a very early age i was going out with my mom knocking on people's doors and she would have bible studies with people so i'd be sitting in the houses of these strangers for hours at a time but thankfully I was a talent, a talented artist. So I would just sit on the floor with my pad and pencil and just draw for hours. And that would be the only thing that would allow me to pass the time and keep my sanity. So I had a, I had a gift for it and I, um, I pursued it all through, all through school and, and thought that I would be able to, you know, all right, I'm stuck in this organization, but I might still be able to have a career as an artist. So yeah, I was, I've been drawing and, and painting ever since I was old enough to pick up a pencil. So yeah, by the time it was, it was time to submit a portfolio to apply to the school. I had a pretty, pretty, uh, pretty impressive body of work, I would say. Again, in a strange way, you have the Jehovah's Witnesses to thank for that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Absolute silver lining. Huh. Um, well, Doug Smith, thank you so much for taking a few minutes to talk. Of course. Thank you. Stand-up comic, comedy writer, and part-time online SUNY Canton student Doug Smith talking with us from Brooklyn. Smith came to the North Country last fall to perform and talk as part of SUNY Canton's Living Writers series. You'll find a link to some of his comedy work at ncpr.org slash northwards. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Northwards. I'm Mitch Tyke. I hope you enjoyed our interview, and you can catch new content every Friday right here or wherever you get your podcasts. Find out more about Northwards and NCPR on our mobile app or at our website, ncpr.org. And while you're there, make a donation to support everything you hear on North Country Public Radio. Northwards is an NCPR podcast production. The program is written, recorded, and edited by Mitch Dyke with digital production supervision by me, Ethan Shanty. Music by the Wickmore Jazz Trio of Plattsburgh. To support this show and find more podcasts, visit ncpr.org. This is NCPR, North Country Public Radio.